So the, the, the combination is, is irrelevant. So let's just stick with something really simple. My partner's going to hold the pad across his chest like this. I'm going to work just with your punch. I just work one, two into the pad. I'm going to advance on him. I'm going to clinch, clinch. I'm going to put me in. I'm going to throw him away. And it'll be a finish with a regular kick. So it's punch, punch. Step in, clinch, clinch. Knee, throw him away. Feel the gap with violence. Regular kick. Last thing I should see is him on one knee. At least to signal that the threat's done. So we're just laying down a basic combination. One, two. If after that one, two, he wants to take a step back, that's even better because what have I done? I've hit him in the head. Boom, he's gone back. I've got to step in. Clinch. Hands up the back. Put a knee in. Cast him away. Forearm. And then that space. Doing here. Hands up. Check around. Beat feet to the exit. So we take a partner. We go through that slow just so we lay it down as a skill. Once I've done mine, boom, and I've exited towards the door, he's going to give me the pad he's going to do. So we're playing ping pong, one rep each all the way through. Yeah, got that? So take a partner, decide who's going first. If I think he's maybe getting up again, I can almost crush a toe, an ankle, or a wrist, or something like that. So we've got a final stomp if we need it. My suggestion is, if he's on one knee, at the very least, or if he's on his arse or on his back, chances are you can get away anyway without crushing anything. It's an overkill, right? Except if this is, you know, serious life-threatening situation, like a terrorist threat or something like that. I don't really want to be stamping on people unless I absolutely have to be. So once I've kicked him in the balls, boom, down he goes. Right? That's it. Boom. If he's 50-50 in two minds, I'm away anyway. Yeah, take the space. Another couple of goes and then we'll add to it. Good. So, when he's there and I've kicked him, basically I've given him a beat down, right? He's down now, right? He's down and he's done. If after that knee I want to do something else, it would depend on the energy, right? So when I got to that clinch, let's come forward a little bit, Hush. got to that clinch position, boom, here I put that knee in, why is the kick following? Why? Because I feel him going away from it. So I'm just working with that. Put that knee in. Oh, fuck. There he is. Boom. Here comes the kick. Right? So if I get that energy of he's drifting away from my knee, oh, work with the space. Boom. Don't fight against it. I don't try and hold him there. No, I'm trying to hang on to him, drag him forward. His energy's going back. So use that judo principle. Work with the energy. Put the knee in. Oh, he's gone away. Boom. If his energy is falling into me, though, if I get this kind of here, oh, well, just come down. Just come down. I just snatch him down. Draw him down. Boom. This way. Draw him down to here. So now he's going to give you an energy. I'm going to hit one, two. I'm going to step forward. I'm going to clinch. I'm going to put that knee in. Boom. If I feel he's going away, let him go away. Kick him. If I put that knee in, I feel here he's coming forward. Down he comes. So I react to what I feel through these. Yeah? Take that, work it a little bit. Good, we can put another one in here. I'm a big fan of throwing at the end. I want him to hit the floor. I want to, as Baz Brun says, introduce him to the ambiance of the establishment. If I can put him down on the floor, rather than just continue to beat on him, I can get him down. Chances are I've bought myself quite a lot of time, you know, three or four seconds to beat feet, which is time to do something which is much more sensible than stand and fight, right? To get out, get to somewhere of safety, close the door and so on. Also, it's a good attitude dissuader. Right? Put someone on the floor, right? You've already broken that kind of psychological equality. He's already down and he knows he's down. Unless he thinks he's tripped, and that does happen, and he bounces straight back up because he thinks he's fallen over. If he realizes that you just threw him to the floor and he was like a rag doll, then Suddenly I'm up here, literally up here, and he's down there, both physically and in ego terms as well. Right? So it's a good psychological breaker. It's not fail-safe. Right? He may just get back up even more pissed off, but it's better. And how much more reasonable does that sound in court? Well, Your Honour, he started to punch me. Right? I took my head button, I gouged his eye, I kicked him in the balls, and I beat on the back of his brainstem and went down. Right? Or, as it would be say, you know, you hit him and hit him and hit him and hit him like Mike Tyson coming out of the corner. Well, Your Honour, you know, he started to throw punches at me. I came in, I put my knee in his groin, and I threw him to the floor. 
and while he was getting up, I ran away, or I restrained him on the floor. Suddenly that sounds a whole lot more reasonable. And sure, if you're still aggressive, and so I can go back to those things, but it's not the default. So we've got other options from here. G1 option. I go here, bam, I step in, I put that knee in, boom. I feel him still upright, still upright. But I can take him here, take hold of his clothing. I don't have to go to the chin jab. Boom, down he goes from here. Just take his feet out from under him. Monitor him here if I need to. Just give him a tune up from here. So just the throw. Once I've gone knee from here, boom, he's still upright. I haven't broken his structure. You slip to the arch, drive this across him, pull it to you. You're going to go three feet in a line. This one's going to drive up. And then I'm going to knee myself in the eyeball and reap his leg away. You understand the term reap, yeah? Be the grim reaper. Down he goes from here. Oh boy. So give him this energy now. Bum bum with the pad, go back. Pulls you down, puts a knee in. You should be trying to straighten up. Feel that pressure coming back up. Boom. Now you're sitting there. Got it? Where we go. One, two, three. Oh. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Step, step, step even further into it. I need to be in a line with your shoes. I think I need contact with your leg. Okay. I think I need contact with your leg. Okay. Um, look, he's supposed to move me. I think my leg is underneath me. Yeah. Yeah. Reap it. Show the sole of your foot to the ceiling. Right. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Mm -hmm. One more time. <laughs> this is just the drill, right? All we've done is I've given you something which is a G1 technique just to just to keep the mind occupied. Because as we do repetitions now, you're gonna work out, well, what's my partner with the pad doing? Are they going away from me so I kick them? Are they coming towards me down so I'm just making a Greco snatch? Or are they kind of still fighting me so I'm taking them off their feet backwards? You've got three choices. We'll add a fourth later if it gets easy. Um, three choices which will keep your mind occupied. But inside that, we're gonna put some other stuff. So I'm going to take my partner and his partner. So I'm going to take two people and you're going to wait. You're going to wait in a fence position, a go ready position. When I shout go, you're going to begin the combination. If you go all the way to the end, whatever it is, boom, hands up, run, get to the edge, scan. If however, the whistle goes in between, that's the stop point. That's the thing that reinforces reasonable force. Whatever you just did was enough to stop the problem. So if I say go, that's it, he's down. And he's just, whoa, fuck, where's he gone? Now it's done. So he just stops, checks around, and then runs, re-evaluates from the edge of the area by the door. Come back, we switch over, we wait for the other person. So it might go quickly, it might go somewhere in the middle, and it might not go at all, so that you've got to go all the way through to the worst possible case where you actually have to throw him to the floor, boom, or kick him and watch him fall. Got it? Good. So, in front of your partner. Ready? Wait for my command go. And if you hear the whistle, the pad holder goes back, goes to the floor, like they've been poleaxed, and you're scanning. Ready? Go! <laughs> He needs to see you down. He needs to see that. He gets confidence from seeing you on the floor. Thinks that that's what worked. And his brain next time says, okay, when I do that, it will work. It will do that. It will do that. It will do that. Switch it over. So we keep on. Ready? Go! Okay. So now we're making like this. Whenever that whistle goes, it goes now. Boom. He's down. I'm not sure if he's in two minds or not. Maybe he, he went down a bit easier. Maybe he's looking like he wants to get up. Rather than going to crushing his ankle or anything, <laughs> like, that, something like that, I'm going to give him a verbal dissuader. Right? And I'm going to do this in the following way. First of all, I'm going to point at his eye. Right? And make him look at me. Right? I want him to look at me. It's about the only time I will point to someone. Right? It's usually like this. Yeah? Well, all right, mate, I'll calm you down. Right? Back a hand, front of the hand. 
gentle touch as we saw today. I'm going to say to you, you stay there, you stay down. Right. I'm going to blade my body off. It does two things. One is it gives me a look to the exit. I'm already beginning my scanning mode. Right. Second thing is I'm not confronting him. I'm not leering and looming. Don't fucking stay there. Right. He will fight. He'll start to kick out. He'll start to try and get up. He'll start to claw. Right. If I go like this and I blade off, he understands that this is not an immediate threat. But all that conditioning, millions of years of evolution, telling him to stay on the floor because he doesn't want to be lunch. Right? So stay there, you stay down. Now I make my way in and I turn and run. So I'm giving him this verbal boundary, this de-escalation technique in the middle of the See, see if I'm unsure. If he's unconscious, I don't want to talk to an unconscious person. I'm not making a cup of tea, whatever he needs to do. But he, stay there. And I'm away. And then I'm running. When I, when I turn to run, you know, if it's over here, give him that, give him a couple of steps while I check. And then as I turn, I pull this in. I turn, I keep my eyes down, right? so I use my peripheral vision, I can see much more behind me if my head is down, than if my head is up. I still see where I'm going, but I can see much more behind me. I keep my ears open, keep tabs open, because if I hear footsteps gaining on me, I've got to turn. So we need our awareness as we run away. Stay down there. Try and get towards the door. Yeah, got it? Good, so when the whistle goes, that's what you're doing. You're breaking and going to a de-escalation. Go! Sometimes they're like, like jelly, right? You know, you hit them and then just go down. That's, that's kind of nice, but it's also frustrating, right? It's disappointing. Right? Yeah, please, 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 try again, try harder. Right? You trend all your life for that, for that one moment, and then he just falls away, right? The danger there is that because of that, that adrenaline, that sheer adrenaline that I've built myself up and I've actually managed to hit someone probably for the first time as an adult for many, many students, so I've actually managed to defend myself Look, I'm just going to go through the whole thing, whether he stood up or not. That's the, that's the danger. Then I end up committing an assault, right? Because I'm frustrated at how easy it was. So it's good to practice ones where they go straight down. It's also good to practice ones where the frustration comes from the other end, where you're constantly working and nothing's happening. It's just like hitting a brick wall and nothing's happening. Ready, let's go again. Ready? Go! Stay down! Stay down! Don't fucking move! Don't fucking move! Once I've done whatever I've done, boom, boom, I've hit here, I've gone in. Maybe the whistle goes now and he's just down. Now you stay there. But I don't know who these guys are. Right? Maybe they're just bystanders who are you know, curious or shocked or getting their phones out or something like that. And maybe one of them is his mate. I don't know in the moment. So as I go towards my exit, I've got to be aware of these guys, what they're doing. I don't want to just start lamping them. And even if they start walking towards me, I don't necessarily know that they're a threat. Maybe he's just really concerned about me. And he wants to check that I'm okay. You're right, mate. You're right. <laughs> but I don't want to get caught up in that. So I'm going to command them. My finish mode, my exit strategy is to be commanding. Right? Just like in a first aid course where you know, everyone stood around, you know, slack jawed, looking at the casualty while you're trying to do first aid. You're trying to do 10 jobs at once. So I'll outsource one of them. Go, you. Have you got your phone on you? Yes or no? Yes. Get it out now. Dial 999. I'll tell you what to say in a minute. Right? Give them, you, I need you to go and find some hot water because we're going to deliver the baby now. Right? Or whatever it is I need you to do. Right? Uh, so I'm going to command them to do stuff. We are, we are command followers. If someone shouts at you to do something, chances are, in a stressful situation, you will do it. Right? And if someone doesn't tell you what to do, chances are you won't do anything effective at all. One of the sad things about kind of airplane uh, disasters, and we only hear about the worst ones where lots and lots of people are killed, is that many people who die in airplane crashes actually would survive if they got out of their seats. They just don't. They just stay strapped in their seats whilst the plane burns or sinks or whatever it is. Because no one's told them what to do. They have no blueprint in their mind. So I'm going to, in the absence of a blueprint in their mind, give them one. And if he's hostile, I'll make him think twice at least. Right? So I put him down. Uh, you stay there. You stay back from me. You stay back as well. Don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. All right? As I edge my way out of the room, assessing whether they're a threat. You know, and if he's coming towards me aggressively, now I know I've got a fight if I can't break. Right? So I need to crowd manage. This is crowd management. 
put him down, boom, boom, boom. He's my immediate problem, you stay there. And now I'm managing the rest of the crowd while I'm looking for my exit. Stay there! You stay back, Rob, you stay back. And I want to go like the policeman, stop sign. Doesn't look overly aggressive, but I'm stay back. That CCTV. Stay back, stay back, from you Out of the way, move, move, move. Right? Now manage the crowd on the way out. So, it doesn't matter if they're in the middle of their drill, just manage them on the way out. Yeah? They can still work. Everyone got it? Questions? Good, okay. Ready? Go! Fucking stay there! Stay there! You stay there as well! Don't you fucking move! Stay there! Fuck off! Ready back. Switch. Gotta be commanding, right? If you go Scooby Doo, right? If you go Scooby Doo and you know that you do that, I do it, I get, I get like talking in tongues, right? You know, all the, receiving the Holy Spirit and stuff, right? So if you know you do that, keep it simple, right? Back! Back! Right? Just stay monosyllabic, just come on, back! Right? Now show my pass, ready? Go! through between their shoulders, like a wedge, heads going down behind it, boom, and then it's going through, just flaring out, it's like I'm sliding their bodies and heads down here. Now take shields, and then bring those shields up to their shoulders, uh, facing the front, and that's, that's it, so that that's the kind of the outside of their body, and once I put this guy down, boom, oh Christ, now I'm going, boom, through to and out the door as fast as I can. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. So, two right people table. doing the drill, two people holding the shields. So, is there an elbow strike? Is it is. Like... It's kind of like going into the water, but then make like this. Right. And you'll find that there's some kind of drag on the pad, and what it becomes is like an elbow strike. So, what I'm getting on them is this kind of motion. Ooh, yeah. Not trying to knock them out, I'm just trying to drive their head sideways. Slide his head off me. It's not like I'm trying to take their heads out. Wedge, boom, create space as their heads go opposite directions. I'm going through down. Yeah. So two people with working the drill. trying to, we're just trying to hold it, right? So, someone that wants to hold us there while the police arrives, that kind of thing, a couple of, you know, well-intentioned but, but misguided people that think that, you know, it's really important that we, you know, break them up and hold them, he doesn't want to be there. So, as soon as that whistle goes and he's down here, boom, now we're like here, whoa, whoa, whoa. we're trying to hold it, whoa, whoa. No, 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 okay, okay. and from that position, yeah, he's just got to, just got to get through, whether he goes... From here, where they, you know, they, they got hold of me, yeah. just start, you know, hold on to me like I'm doing. Where they just start fucking going through them and just kind of get the arms moving out the way, just go like squid like and try and get them through and pump the knees, right? Like I'm running really fucking fast on the spot to get through. Whether I try and slip underneath one as he puts his hand up, I'll find that gap, find that gap. So as soon as that whistle goes, the other three should be round him, just clinging, clinging, clinging. And he's like, no, 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 not holding me. 
and going through. Don't rip your shirt off, just hold his limbs. Yeah? Go! <laughs> Hey, hey, back, back! Fuck off! Nice. Hey, hey, you got it! What are you doing? What are you doing? Leave that, guys! Leave it out! Leave it out! Stay Go! Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, you got it! Whoa, 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 Good, so a situation where I don't need to immediately ban them. I can tell from their body language they're trying to restrain me. Oh, it's just coming forward like this, so I know what I've got to do. But we need to, to at least think about decoding some of that body language in the moment. Easier said than done when we're tunnel visioned, auditory excluded, all those kinds of common things.